Hey there everybody and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about, for lack of a better word, fiber optics renders. And when I say that, I mean this thing. We have procedural control over it, so kind of like the distribution, uh, the number of these things we have. It's basically a bunch of lines and glowing spheres that are out of focus. Uh, but I see these in all kinds of like phone commercials and glasses commercials and stuff like this. And I figured out a way to do it. It's basically a sphere with a bunch of points that we crop and look at a section of. So uh, let me make this thing in geometry nodes and you can follow along. And before we get into the tutorial, I just want to say if you're kind of new to geometry nodes and you don't know what's going on and you want an introduction, I've actually written a book about getting into the intermediate level of geometry nodes. So make sure to check that out. Uh, let's go to the tutorial. So in geometry nodes, we're going to start with a geo nodes object. And like I said, this is a bunch of lines and dots coming out of a sphere. So I'm going to start with a UV sphere and we are going to distribute points on faces. So for each one of these points that we're creating on the surface of the sphere, we're going to have a line coming out of it. So uh, instance on points so that we can instance on each one of these points a curve line. Now the reason I'm using a curve line and hook up rotation by the way is so that I can give this thing thickness using the curve to mesh trick. So we have a bunch of curve lines emitting out of the sphere. To give this thickness, like I just said, we're gonna use the curve to mesh trick. So we're gonna use this with a profile curve of a circle. And uh, just a tip here, I would recommend uh, bringing down the uh, resolution of this since it's unnecessary to have this be high res and it's gonna take up a lot of geometry uh, if we decide to instance this. Uh, which we are. We are going to instance these uh, curves. As uh, so you can see, 5,000 as opposed to 25,000, uh, especially as we increase the number of points. I also want the lines to get thinner as they go up, so I'm going to set the curve radius uh, to be a function of the spline parameter, uh, which right now is doing the opposite. As it starts, it's thin, and then it goes uh, up. Uh, we could either do a math trick or we can just reverse the curve of the curve line. Yeah, that works. So uh, we, I know, surprising, I've already made this uh, myself. But uh, here you can see we have a bunch of lines uh, that we're emitting outwards and making them uh, super thin. Cool. Uh, now, at the tip of each one of these, I don't really care about this interior, uh, but more so this exterior, uh, we want to instance a sphere. Easy enough. So I'm going to instance on points, and we can do some fancy endpoint tricks, or we can just kind of admit defeat and say that, yeah, we're going to have spheres on both the uh, tops and the bottoms. And by that, I mean we have spheres both out here and on the interior, which does waste some geometry, but whatever. Uh, I'm going to make these 8 by 6 to save on geometry, and uh, to make this look a bit better, uh, I'm going to randomize, because randomization is what's going to make this look good. So some spheres are big, some are small. And speaking of uh, randomization, we can also randomize the scale of our lines. So maybe from 0.8 to 1.2. So this is kind of like the spread of how far these things go outward. Um, at this point, it probably makes sense to set up our composition. So... Oh, I set up a second camera for some reason. Um, so I'm just going to kind of set this up so we can see what we're looking at. I'm just going to make this a zoomed in perspective of the tip of the sphere. And to see what we're actually doing, I'm going to increase this passer parto, I think is how it's pronounced. And here you can see the uh, kind of the composition. Uh, I want higher density and I want these spheres to be a bit smaller. So I'm going to bring down the randomness. And I think, let's increase this by a lot. I think that looks pretty good. Um, one more thing before we start with materials is these lines, which get thinner as they go up. Um, as a general rule, uh, they're too thick, so I'm just going to multiply the factor by like a number less than one. And that makes these lines super thin. And now we can make uh, materials. Uh, so I think we can do this in Eevee. Uh, there's no reason why not. So I'm going to make material one, material two, and inside geometry nodes, I'm going to set material one for the sphere and one for the lines, I believe. We'll do that. Um, okay, so let's see what this looks like so far. So we're going to go to the rendered view. I'm going to get rid of any background. And we actually don't need any light either, but we'll keep it for now. If we change material one, you can see it's changing our spheres. Uh, the trick here is we are going to use uh, emission. 
uh, which is going to make these kind of bright. In fact, since these are instances, we can use the random uh, to randomize the color. So I'm going to throw this through a color ramp and say that this can be either kind of blue or kind of like purplish. Let's see if that works. Yeah, so you can see these are slightly different colors. And there we go. Um, beyond that, I think the trick is to enable some bloom and kind of decrease the threshold, decrease the radius, and maybe increase the intensity, or maybe increase the strength so these are brighter, something like that. And here we have our spheres. Uh, kind of similar trick for the lines. Uh, you could randomize them. I'm not really going to, so I'm just going to make these kind of like bright blue lines that have some transparency. And for transparency, uh, you can make the blend mode alpha blend so that the alpha actually affects them. So something like that. Now the trick uh, to making this look great is actually making this out of focus. So I'm going to enable some depth of field and I'm going to bring the focus distance so this is kind of out of focus, kind of like that. Uh, so this is without, this is with. And you can actually do tricks like changing the number of blades and uh, stuff like that if you want them to be like hexagons. Um, I don't really care. We can make this a ratio of two and bring down the f-stop. Okay, so really, again, this is a matter of like focusing your camera and like messing with the bloom until you like it. So I'm gonna bring down or up the radius, I don't know, something like that. Uh, but you can see, this is how like we did the setup. So just to kind of go over everything, um, we have a procedural system where we can control the number of points. So you can get crazy with this. Uh, you can control the distribution uh, to get the look you want, the radius of these lines. You can see why I want them to be pretty thin now. And uh, thickness, stuff like that. I think that's the essence of it. Um, anything I want to say beyond that? I don't think so. There's the tutorial. And I know what you were thinking the entire time you were watching that video. You're thinking, what chair was I sitting in? Good question. I, I got sent an Ewin chair, and this is kind of like a premium gaming office chair. And I just want to talk about it for a moment. I got sent a free one in exchange for a very quick review. So let me just talk about it. So this is a premium office chair. It has cushions here. It actually has a cushion here that I removed. I'm not a big fan of it uh, personally, but it is kind of comfy. Uh, this chair has suspension. It's, it's crazy. You sit down and it feels like you're on a bicycle. And uh, let me position this a bit better. And this thing has like rotating armrests and stuff like that. Features I've never seen in a chair, quite honestly. So uh, the wheels roll smooth. Uh, you can kind of control the tilt of this as you might expect. So if, if it's uh, leaning forwards or backwards. And uh, yeah, get yourself a new chair. Information in the description.